going to stay in the social media corner. <laughs> huh? I was like, I'll just stay in the social media corner. And take pictures. Family stuff. That's a that's a social media corner. Yeah, I guess. That's so. opposed to the mainstream TV uh, yeah. cameras. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are kind of social media too. It's gonna go on YouTube. There you go. <laughs> Maybe some stuff I just Um. So welcome everyone and thank you all for coming to our press conference today. My name is Holly Cole, I'm the uh, campaign coordinator of NACASA, National Korean American Service and Education Committee. We're going to report back on Dreamwriters Across America, which was our national campaign this summer. Um, and celebrate also the third anniversary of DACA implementation, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, uh, starting in 2012. And it's 2015 now, and it's the third year anniversary of DACA implementation. But this year, um, it's been, so it's been about a week, a little over a week since Dreamwriters Across America came to a close. Our youth traveled from Washington, D.C. to Texas to share their stories as undocumented um, communities of color. Um, and our Dreamwriters included 12 youth from four states. And they are Asian American, Latino, and African American. And so today we'll hear reflections from our youth who had traveled across the country to share their stories, to talk about immigrant rights and also racial justice, and also met with local communities in the different states that we visited. And today we have a great lineup of speakers. We're very honored to have Congressman Judy Chu um, be with us here today. She's a U.S. representative for California's 27th uh, congressional district and chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, or KPAC, which advocates for the needs and concerns of the Asian American Pacific Islander communities across the country. And we also have Clara Kim, our dream writer from La Crescenta, Leticia Velez, our dream writer from Los Angeles, who, who will share their reflections on this trip. And Ju Hong, the national API DACA collaborative coordinator, will speak about uh, next steps for our campaign and for our youth here today, and also talk about DACA and DACA. And Bo Darafon from uh, Los Angeles, he's also a dream writer, will close our press conference. So without further ado, Congressman Judy Chu. Well, as chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, I am so proud of the dream writers who have gone all across the nation to talk about the story of our dream students. And uh, I am and, and so um, encouraged that uh, Nakasak um, and so many courageous California dreamers were involved in this tremendous effort. In fact, uh, I remember when you kicked off in Washington, D.C., and um, I remember that uh, you were going on this 12-day tour uh, from Washington, D.C. to Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Louisiana, and that the goal was for these young people to meet with government officials, community supporters, and organizers to share their stories and to encourage others to enroll in the DACA program. Um, and I am so proud that API took such a large role in the whole Dream Ride program. Uh, and it comes on the heels of another uh, Dream Rider Across America campaign two years ago when you did uplift the voices of Asian Pacific Islander dreamers and encourage them to participate during that time. Uh, and that occurred during the, um, the reform bill that we put forth, the Comprehensive Immigration Reform Bill, which would have been the ultimate solution, the best solution to the issues that our immigrants face in this country. But that that was stalled, uh, and instead we have the DACA program, uh, which is a precious thing to provide relief to so many undocumented students here in America. Now, I am particularly thrilled that NACASAC uh, and the Korean community is so involved because we have an under-enrollment. APIs make up 6% of this nation. We account for over 40% of the dream students in the University of California. And so, if you took the numbers, then 8% of the DreamX students are, who, are, who should be enrolled in the DACA program should be API. 
8%. But what is it really? It's only 2.6%. So we are under enrolled in the DREAM Act program, the DACA program. And so it's really important to get the word out and to educate people about the relief that this, this, uh, this program could really offer to a lot of our young people. And just to tell you about the potential of our Dream Act students, let me talk about Jose Antonio Vargas. He was sent as a student from the Philippines to live with his grandparents uh, in America, but he did not know until he was age 16 that he was undocumented. He then lived in fear and, and d in fact, didn't even enroll in the college of his dreams because he uh, was fearful that he could could not afford it and that he would be found out. He did decide to go to another college anyway, became a journalist, and then, in an amazing turn of events, won the Pulitzer Prize. So that just tells you about the potential of our Dream Act students if they are able to actually get their degrees and go into the workplace. So I want to tell all of the media that is here that um, I hope you can tell your audiences that there is nothing to fear and everything to gain by enrolling in DACA. No longer will API Dreamers have to look over their shoulders fearing deportation. Instead, they can have a bright future with the ability to build a career and, to, uh, and the ability to achieve the American dream. And the great thing about Nakasak and Korean Resource Center and KRCC is that they will be able to make sure that Korean Americans will, will be able to receive cultural and linguistic help in doing these kind of filings. And of course, always be aware of those who would defraud you and cheat you and who would, act, would actually take money from you to enroll in this program because nobody should be doing that. This You can enroll for free, so very, very important to communicate that with people. So I want to thank you all for inviting me to reflect on the successful Dream Riders Across America bus tour. Um, I congratulate all these young people for really taking such a strong part in this effort. And I look forward to working with all of you to make sure that we can enroll more APIs in the DACA program. And then let's fight to make sure that ultimately we get a comprehensive immigration bill successfully passed in America. Thailand originally and then I live in Los Angeles. some more who weren't able to make it today, and we have other Dream Riders from Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Texas. And so this was a joint effort with NACASA, KRC, KRCC, also at Service Employees International Union, SCIU, United Service Workers West, SCIU California State Council, and also Children Over Politics. So many of our youth here today are part of Children Over Politics. Just wanted to kind of highlight um, that group because they've done a lot of great work in building a youth uh, organizing group and kind of fighting for the rights of immigrants, people of color, and other folks in our community. Just wanted to kind of spotlight them. And now we will have our Clara Kim who will kind of share her reflections and you can be seated. <laughs> Um, hello, my name is Clara Kim. I was born in Seoul, South Korea, and I currently live in La Crescenta, California. And I'll be starting college this fall as an incoming freshman at Azusa Pacific University. 
Um, this summer, I was one of the 12 Dreamwriters to participate in the National um, Dreamwriters Across America campaign. In two weeks, we visited nine states and 12 cities, holding press conferences <coughs> to share our stories as impacted youth and inform local communities about immigrant rights, deferred action programs like DACA and DAPA that would provide relief from deportation to eligible und undocumented immigrants and racial justice. I participated in this campaign because I wanted to share my story as a DACA recipient, learn about the issues that undocumented communities in the South face, and talk about how we can work together to fight for the rights of all, all of our immigrant and people of color communities. Some of the most meaningful pro moments during the trip came when we met with other youth in Charlotte, North Carolina, and New Orleans, Louisiana. We learned from them about the issues impacting their communities, and it was inspiring to see how they built a strong multiracial community to fight for justice. We also had the opportunity to visit historical sites like the Martin Luther King Center in Atlanta, Georgia, and cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. It was an opportunity to connect the work we were doing as dream writers, as Asian American, Latino, and African American youth in 2015 with the Civil Rights Movement. This trip was an eye-opening experience for me because I learned that there are many others, like myself, who have experienced challenges <coughs> because of their race and because of their immigration status. I always felt like I was the only one who worried about not being able to attend school, about being separated from my family, and about having my status discovered. But through this trip, I, I realized that there is a strong community of undocumented youth and allies who have spoken out against these injustices and have been leading this movement for change. I also learned how so many undocumented Asian Americans in cities like Houston have not applied for DACA because of fear of the consequences of, of applying for this program and lack of information. It was in Houston that I shared my story for the first time and shared with community members about the opportunities, opportunities I have had with DACA. I was able to go to college, apply for jobs, and even travel back to South Korea. But even though I have DACA, I also know that there is still more that needs to be done. I have friends who are eligible for expanded DACA, yet are unable to receive the same benefits as I am because of the Texas injunction. I have friends whose parents are eligible for the Parent Deferred Action Program, DAPA, but continue to worry that their parents may one day be deported. And I have a mother who is not eligible for any of the Deferred Action Programs and still waits for the day when our elected leaders will fix our broken immigration system so that she can live in, without the fear of being separated from me and my younger brother. I hope to continue working with my fellow dream writers, all the youth we met during, during our journey, and everyone else who is still out there to make sure that we raise our voices and change our communities for the better so that immigrants, people of color, and other communities can pursue their dreams and have a better life. Thank you. Thank you, Clara. So as she mentioned, she shared her story for the first time in Houston, and it was a second place. And we have the other lives from Los Angeles, who also shared her story. Hi. Uh, I was born in Mexico City. I came to this country when I was nine years old, along with my mom, who's a single mother, and my two younger brothers. Uh, I am really honored to have been, uh, you know, part of the Dream Writers uh, Across America tour. It was just very eye-opening, and um, um, it was it was very eye-opening. We uh, visited nine states, twelve cities in total, like. And um, we were met with such welcoming air. <laughs> it was a, um, all these associations and the communities opened um, their doors to us, and we were really welcome. Uh, we, um, I remember when we visited New Orleans. I mean, you can still see the effect that Katrina has had on them, and uh, how they're. They come from low-income communities and all the racial tension that is there. But nonetheless, you will find just some of the most humble people there. And we were met with such, um, it was a really nice experience to be down there, even though we were only there for a day. But they were really nice. They actually, they came down to our, uh, the, the motel and they brought some ice cream. And we, we had some nice laughs and whatnot. But, um, it was it was uh, a really nice experience for me. We actually went to Selma, and uh, prior to this, we had just watched the movie Selma, so it was like really big history all over again. And I was very honored. I felt very honored to be 
walking through the Edmund Pettus uh, Bridge. And uh, we are actually joined with the NAACP with their uh, Just Their Summer Rally. And, uh, you know, they're, they march from Selma to Washington, D.C., which is 860 miles, all for justice. It was such an amazing opportunity because you were able to see the old generation and the new generation coming together and fighting for the same thing. And uh, I remember we were, we were doing a couple of chants and there was this moment because it was very loud, you know, they had music going on, everyone was talking, and all of a sudden we started doing a couple of chants and everyone just, it was, it was very quiet and everyone turned around and looked at us and they were like, yeah, you know, that's, that's the future, that's our future leaders, our, that's, that's our future right there. And it was such a um, powerful image. And I'm just really proud of all my <laughs> my fellow dream writers because I have seen them grown from their you know like, you know the shy people they were or you know just grow into more amazing people and share their stories and speak out. So I am really proud of them and I you know I tell them that all the time you know like how are you um, you know what are you doing and um, we build relationships, we build friendships that are going to last for quite a while. I mean, we, <laughs> we are, we are, but it, I'm just very honored to have been proud of uh, part of this journey and I really hope that it's not the last time and that we can do this again and um, you know, keep, keep the fight going. So as she mentioned, um, we're talking about keeping the fight going. So Ju Hong, our national API DACA collaborative coordinator, will talk about next steps and also give us an update on what's happening with DACA and DACA. Um, as you all know, uh, last Saturday on August um, 15, 2015, was the third year anniversary of DACA program. And since 2012, DACA program has improved over 600,000 young immigrants um, who are now uh, could work, um, open a bank account, and get a driver's license for the first time in their lives. And last year in 2014, President Obama announced uh, DACA expansion and DAPA programs. Um, and uh, this year is supposed to be the year where uh, these programs are supposed to be implemented. But unfortunately, uh, Republican Texas governor uh, filed a lawsuit against these programs um, and therefore uh, these programs are currently on hold and putting millions of undocumented families in jeopardy. Um, but in the, in the midst of this Texas injunction, we're waiting for the court to decide on this case. Um, undocumented youth and youth of color who joined Dream Riders Tour um, and taking a stand and moving forward, um, we're not going to wait, we're going to fight, and we're going to advocate for our own community. Um, and so uh, they are, they took this long journey, um, so-called national campaign Dream Riders Tour, to share their personal stories throughout the country, traveling across America, and inspire people to take action on immigration and racial justice issues and they change so many people's lives and as we are moving forward although this campaign officially over but I know that this youth will continue to share their stories continue to organize events um, you know pick up signs and rally and educate people and inspire people to uh, bring along uh, to fight for immigration and racial justice issues that are happening in America. And not only they're going to do that, but also they're going to encourage uh, people who are eligible to vote uh, next year in 2016 to encourage to vote and encourage people to civically engage uh, in our American society. Thank you. sharing what we'll be doing next. And now to close the press conference, we have Bo from uh, one of our dream writers, Bo Bo's. Hello guys, so um, as, uh, as Judy Shu and uh, Clara has been saying about um, API and um, undocumented groups not speaking out or having low turnout rates in DACA, it is very crucial 
for the AAPI communities to come out and start having these kind of conversations so we can identify the problems. And that's what we learned from the trip. But beyond that, we also learned about intersection intersectionality, that this is not just an issue of the Hispanic Latino API, but it goes beyond that. It goes to just a point of uh, a human rights. That's why we, we work with uh, colored folks and uh, African Americans for racial uh, justice. Because essentially, all of us, we just want a right to live a normal life, to walk, you know, to go to school, to work, to support our family. And, and that's what it is. That's why, and, and look, look what we have here. We've built a, a great community. And that trip, going from uh, states to states, we met with nonprofit organization with, who might not have um, been directly affected by immigration or racial injustice, but it is the right thing to do. So I wanted to end this by um, asking you guys to um, keep spreading the love and keep supporting uh, any social justice and cause because uh, it, there's this thing saying that if uh, a justice for one is a justice for all, and we all can do our parts. It starts from educating, inspiring each other, having that conversation, being more open-minded, voting, and I'm glad that uh, we have uh, Judy Shu supporting here for us, and it is a great support, and uh, I'm glad to have, um, to be, um, what's that thing called? Around great people, genuine people, who are just working for, to make the world a better place to live in. So I want you guys to give them all a clap. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, just ask us, and then we're going to stick around for interviews. And then, uh, so yeah, thank you for coming, too. Thank you, everyone.
Well, it is very disappointing that it wasn't uh, determined earlier and it relied on this appeal in, in the court system. Uh, the appeal didn't go our way, but ultimately I do believe the final decision will go our way. And then I actually do expect that the decision, the ultimate decision, would be in this coming year. So it would be still within the president's term. I do, however, have high hopes. Uh, I know that uh, uh, numerous uh, candidates, uh, certainly on the Democratic side, I think all of them, in fact, have supported the um, Comprehensive Immigration Reform Bill and the kinds of things that ultimately will make it successful, which is DACA and DAPA. So I, I do have high hopes for the future, and I do think that the Democratic presidential candidates will continue the program. 